Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality, and well-being into addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen Drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. We want to be your go-to resource for all things health and nutrition. Call us at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you or a loved one is dealing with an intractable health challenge, you don't know where to begin, 844-236 is our number, and we can help you. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges, true skin health products, something you may have heard about, you read about, or read about, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up right off the website, or you can call 866-735-2470. For a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business for yourself. Call 866-735-2470, or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We're talking fats. Last program, we were talking about the different lengths or the different chains or the different sizes of fats. Most fats come in uh, three different lengths, three different sizes, molecular sizes. The long ones, those are the most common ones. Those are the ones that are found in the diet. Those are the ones that are found, uh, mo- I should say, those are the ones that are mostly found in the diet. And when it comes to fats, when we think about, when we typically think of fats, we're thinking of the long fats. They are, tend to be liquidy, most of them. There are some hard, uh, a few hard, long fats, but most of them are, tend to be liquidy. Vegetable oils are your classic example. These are the fats that you hear all the bad stuff about. They're unstable. They're, because they're long, they ha- they're not quite as stable as the shorter ones. It's kind of like, a, like a, a necklace or something. It's, it's really, really long. It's not going to be as stable as a necklace. That, and fats are kind of like a necklace that are shorter. When, as you increase the size of your necklace, you get it, it's, it has a greater tendency to break. It becomes more unstable. Short things have, a, or have more stability. And these are the fats that you hear about avoiding, the long fats. The medium fats, medium to size fats, medium chain fats, medium chain triglycerides. A triglyceride just means fat. So medium chain triglycerides or MCTs. Those are not found as readily in nature. And they are much more stable than the long fats. And this gives them some interesting qualities. Coconut and butter are two good sources of MCT oils. And this is why coconut and butter is not really, I should say coconut oil, doesn't really have the same, you know, when you hear about, when people say to avoid oils, they'll lump in coconut oil with the oils, and it's not really accurate because coconut oil is such a wonderful source of MCT fats, it tends to be way more stable than your typical liquid oils. So uh, when you hear about avoiding fats, sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, you want to avoid vegetable fats, and that includes coconut oil, and coconut oil isn't in the same category because it's got so many, so many MCTs in it. 
Butter certainly is loaded with MCTs, and you could tell by looking at it. Remember, the MCTs are more solid. Butter, has, of course, is more solid than liquid fats, and uh, coconut oil isn't quite as solid as butter, but it still has a degree of solidity. MCTs have many health benefits. Let's be very clear about this. Really, it's quite incredible all the health benefits you can get from MCTs for uh, cystic fibrosis, for uh, uh, GI problems. They're anti-inflammatory. They have anti-inflammatory effects on the intestine. They can be helpful for the uh, microbiome, for the bacteria that live in the intestine, the, the universe of bacteria that are so important for our health. Uh, they're uh, well known for uh, for uh, brain health issues. That's really, there's a lot, MCTs in the brain, it's really quite fascinating, the relationship that MCTs have in the brain. We'll talk about that here in a second. Um, but uh, medium chain triglycerides are also, they're, they're claimed to fame, at least from a hospital point of view, is that they're important for the digestive system. And they've got weight loss benefits too, because the body uses them quickly. It doesn't have to go through all the processing. So the MCTs go right into the bloodstream and they get used. But it's this ketogenic aspect of the MCTs that I find most fascinating. If you're on the ketogenic diet, MCTs are your best friend. MCTs are readily converted into ketones and then distributed throughout the body. This is one of the reasons why they can help you lose weight. This is one also reason why you'll hear to put uh, you'll hear uh, alternative practitioners sometimes saying to put coconut oil in your coffee. It's because you can bump up the keto, bump up the uh, energy uh, energy boosting effects of the caffeine. Ketogenic ketones being energy boosting. And this whole ketogenic property is also why coconut oil has gotten such a great reputation for the brain. MCTs are neurologically protective. The ketones that are made in response to the medium chain triglycerides cross over into the brain really effectively. They provide fuel for the brain. Remember, the ketogenic diet was first developed as a brain diet. It was first developed as a seizure disorder diet. So it makes perfect sense that coconut oil, which is very rich in MCTs, would have benefits for the brain, whether you're dealing with seizure disorders or whether you're dealing with Alzheimer's disease. And there's a lot of alternative literature, a lot of books out now about the coconut oil cure for Alzheimer's disease. And I don't know necessarily that coconut oil is a cure for Alzheimer's disease or for dementia, but it's certainly not going to hurt. If you're having any brain health issues, or if you just want to keep your brain healthy and you don't have any brain health issues, the ketogenic diet is definitely something to think about, especially though, if you're, if you are dealing or worried about getting dementia, or if you're a caretaker for somebody who has dementia or Alzheimer's disease, you definitely want to leverage the ketogenic diet. You definitely want to leverage ketones and, and you certainly would be wise to use more butter and more coconut oil uh, to take advantage of the medium chain triglycerides. If you're a caretaker, you can save a lot of headaches, uh, no pun intended, uh, for yourself if you keep, the, keep your patient low calorie and low carbohydrate. Remember, the ketogenic diet is not just a low carb, high fat diet. It's a low calorie, high fat low carb diet. People miss that low calorie part sometimes when they're going ketogenic and, and keeping your protein. They say moderate protein. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Just keep in mind, protein can get turned into uh, sugar pretty quickly. So uh, you want to keep your protein just to where you need it. But too much protein is not a good idea. If you're using your protein, that's one thing. But just to ingest protein without using it is not a good idea. Highly not recommended at all. That, that was the problem with Dr. Atkins' paleo diet, in my opinion. And the paleo diet, is, it was, it's, definitely a, uh, it's definitely an improvement over the standard American diet. But you've got to be a little bit careful with the paleo diet, especially if you're not out there in the gym or you're not working out somehow or you're not, uh, uh, you, you're not building muscle, you're not recovering from surgery. You know, if you're not in anabolic mode, in muscle-building mode, and you're trying to eat a lot of protein, that protein is going to get turned into sugar, and then it's going to get turned into fat, and it isn't going to have health benefits. So if you're going to go high protein, make sure you're in the gym. In any case, the ketogenic diet is a uh, low calorie diet as much as it's a low carb diet. And the fat that you get, the high fat, you'd be wise to use as much MCT fat for that, for the ketogenic diet as you can. And coconut oil, of course, is, such, is, is one of the best sources. Along with butter, it's one of the two best sources. Those are the two best sources of MCTs, butter and coconut oil. You could throw yogurt into the mix probably. This maybe it's palm. I don't know if you eat palm, but uh, palm butter, you can get palm butter now and uh, that's that's also a source of MCTs. And of course, you can get MCTs straight in the health food stores, MCT oil, which is just plain old coconut oil, typically. All right, 
Brian Farms is Benny. 442366010 is our number. You're listening to the bright side, and we'll be back right after this. are back on the bright side and thank you for joining us we're on the air monday through friday eight to nine pacific 10 to 11 central 24 7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com you can get uh, the longevity products off the websites brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com and you can sign up to join the bright side ben team for a one-time 25 dollar fee you can start yourself the longevity business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program and change lives with the longevity products the beyond tangy tangerine and the healthy start pack and fucoid z and ultimate enzymes and glucogel caps thousands of really very impressive and very uh well the nutritional products anyway are very life-changing and they're all up at brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or you can call 866-735-2470 for more information about how to join the brightside ben team or how to purchase products purchase your longevity products. You can also purchase our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 1% gel and our Truth Retinol 5% gel, our Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and uh, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Plant Derived Fulvic Mineral Mist are all up at truthtreatments.com. And keep checking the website at truthtreatments.com. We've got a couple of cleansers coming out here, hopefully in the next mm, couple of weeks, and then a new connective tissue repair supplement as well as our blemish repair complex they're all up at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com okay so we're talking mcts medium chain triglycerides medium chain triglycerides for the brain medium chain triglycerides for the intestine medium chain triglycerides for weight loss there's so many wonderful benefits of these mct oils which are found in coconut oil. Yeah. The same penetrating properties that MCTs have in the digestive tract, the same way they get into the bloodstream so efficiently, uh, in the same way they get into cells really efficiently. And for that matter, MCTs also get into sub cellular structures, particularly the mitochondria, which is where all the energy happens. I hesitate to talk too much about the mitochondria just because that word is so intimidating and the chemistry is kind of uh, intense, how the mitochondria works. So suffice it to say, these little structures in the cells are so mind-blowingly amazing that if you want to have a spiritual experience, just read a book or go on YouTube and try to see what these mitochondria are doing or understand what these mitochondria are doing. And I'm, it's just the most mind-blowing chemistry Ever. And this is how energy is produced. And I don't want to get into the chemistry of it because I'm sure people, it's overwhelming. But it's just absolutely mind blowing how it happens. And MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, because they, remember, they're half watery, they're sort of watery, sort of fatty. They can slip through fatty membranes really efficiently. And that allows them to get into those mitochondria, which have, which, like any structures, have membranes really, really efficiently. And that allows them to be used for fuel really efficiently, and that's why they have such wonderful energy properties. That same ability that MCTs have to kind of traverse membranes makes them really interesting for the hair. MCTs have an ability to penetrate into the hair shaft, into the hair fiber itself. And you don't see them in MCTs in a lot of hair products, but uh, it's they're pretty pretty interesting how these how these things work. Uh, they have conditioning effects. They can kind of plump the hair up. Keep in mind that hair is dead, and there isn't much you're going to be able to do to improve the health of the tissue called the hair, the hair tissue, which is by the way an appendage of the skin. Uh, it's kind of an extension of the skin. It's kind of like fingernails. It's, it's dead. There's not much you could do about it. Uh, do, do about it from the health perspective. However, there are things you could do mechanically and superficially to change the texture and the quality of this, uh, this skin appendage that we call the hair. This superficial manipulation of hair is how your, moist, your uh, conditioners work. Conditioners work on the surface of the hair mechanically. It's kind of like the way moisturizers work on the hand. Now, there's nothing really that's going to moisturize your skin or your hands, a like hand moisturizer. You can't kind of really change the moisture quality of the skin. You're going to coat the skin. And you're going to, when you coat the skin, 
the skin will have a different appearance. It'll have a different feel. You're not changing anything about the skin. You're just putting a coating on the skin. That's how your moisturizer works. Now, it turns out that because there's a lot more livingness in the skin, putting a moisturizer on the skin can have a, a negative effect on the skin. We've talked about that in the past, how using moisturizers can actually suppress skin chemistry, ironically, even uh, especially moisturization chemistry. All chemistry can be suppressed, theoretically anyway, from the application of moisturizers on the surface of the skin. You're not going to get that problem with conditioners, but it's the same kind of effect. In fact, you can actually use a conditioner, a hair conditioner, as a moisturizer for your skin. So, so-called moisturizer for your skin. You're not going to moisturize. I don't even like saying that word. Because we have an assumption when we hear that word that you're doing something with moisture. You're not. When you put a, a skin cream on, you're not affecting the moisture at all, except maybe it's a, trapping some in like a barrier. However, the point I want to make here is that a conditioner will work the same way because a conditioner is doing the same thing, except it's doing it for the hair shaft. The hair shaft has a, has a negative charge because the uh, hair cells and hair itself it has lots of, uh, lots of negatively charged ions on it amino acids particularly, and um, conditioners tend to have an alkaline charge. In fact, they put alkalinizing agents in conditioners. They put things called quats. If you ever read your conditioner uh, ingredient deck, the superstar of your conditioner ingredient deck is called a quat, or which stands for a quatronium ion, but they call, you'll see quat on all conditioners, Q-U-A-T. Quats are really positively charged, and these quats stick to the negatively charged, quats, Q-U-A-T, sticks to the negatively charged hair, and it coats it. And that's called conditioning. That's how your conditioners work. If you look at a hair under a microscope, you'll see it's actually composed of overlapping flakes. And these flakes are uh, like, like scales on a fish. These flakes are collectively referred to as the cuticle. And what gives hair its, uh, its shine is that light bounces off the cuticles. That's what makes your hair shiny. Hair shine is a function of how tightly the cuticles are laying down against each other. Dull hair, hair that doesn't reflect light effectively, is usually the result of broken flakes. The cuticles break off and they become jagged and they're not hanging tightly on each other uh, the way healthy, shiny hair is. Strands, these, uh, these cuticles are like the strands of a, a frayed rope and they don't reflect light back as effectively as when the cuticles are lying flat. And that's also what makes hair frizzy. It's also what makes hair limp. Microscopically speaking, the chemical bonds that hold the cuticle flakes together break down. Think of fish scales. The scales lay on top of each other, kind of uh, overlappingly. And in order for them to lay over, on top of each other overlappingly, there's got to be chemistry, chemical bonds that have to be uh, connecting these flakes together. Hair is the same way. When the chemical bonds break, the flakes start to wear off and they break off. And this is largely a function of nutritional deficiencies, by the way, especially in fats and especially in protein. Fats and protein play the key role in, the, in keeping these cuticle layers laying down efficiently. Mechanical forces are also at play, especially frequent shampooing. Frequent shampooing can break those cuticles. And you know what else can be a problem? Frequent brushing of the hair. And if you believe that hair, that myth, that uh, I grew up with, you probably grew up with it too if you're around my age, you believe that uh, the myth that you're supposed to brush your hair a hundred times a day, you might want to reconsider because what you're doing uh, when you brush your hair a hundred times a day is you're increasing the likelihood that these cuticles are going to break off. You, may, you maybe want to brush your hair. Brushing your scalp's a little different. Brushing your scalp can stimulate blood flow, but if you're just brushing your hair a hundred times a day, uh, you may uh, be increasing the risk of breaking off those cuticles. Combing out tangles can also be a problem. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben team. Or you order products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And, of course, you can check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we'll get your calls here in just a sec from the uh, Journal of Innate Immunity. Natural lipid acts as a potent anti-inflammatory. Lipid meaning fat, natural fat, acts as a potent lipid uh, 
anti-inflammatory. National Institute of Health researchers have identified a naturally occurring fat, a waxy fatty acid that's used by bacteria to impair the host immune response and increase the chance of infection. Invert, inadvertently, they may also have found a potent anti-inflammation uh, therapy against these bacterial uh, and viral diseases. And what is that fat called? It's called phosphatidylethanolamine. I remember, or PEA, phosphatidyl, uh, yeah, PE, what is it? PEA, phosphatidylethanolamine. We'll just say PEA. I remember I had a professor uh, who was a PEA researcher. He was studying how to disrupt PEA. PEA is an important part of the cell membrane, especially in the brain. And PEA disruption can cause uh, can cause uh, hallucinations and delirium and just mess up your brain. And he was working for the Department of Defense. This was a pharmacy school professor. He was working for the Department of Defense, trying to find out how they could use this uh, PEA disruption strategy for as part of chemical warfare. Interestingly enough, PEA disruption uh, can occur when you drink too much alcohol, and that's what causes brain problems. Uh, uh, delirium that alcoholics have. PEA is found in lecithin. If you want to boost your own natural PEA, make sure you're using lecithin with your meals. You can also find uh, PEA in, in uh, cellular foods like eggs and algae. These are made up of single cells, or intact single cells. Uh, and uh, they're wonderful sources of PEA as well as lecithin for that matter. Algae, yeast, and, uh, and eggs. If you have any doubt about eggs being a power food, folks, uh, just the lecithin value, just the lecithin and PEA content alone of eggs makes them incredibly important, incredibly important foods. PEA, uh, or PEA as it also turns out, can uh, help, uh, help uh, suppress inflammation if you're dealing with uh, inflammatory health issues, particularly inflammatory issues of the gut. Use lecithin, awesome supplement. From uh, University of Oxford, Department of Orthopedics, Rheumatology, and Musculo Musculoskeletal Sciences. New hope for patients with incurable and disabling hand condition, Dupetrin's disease. I think you say Dupetrin's disease. I never really knew how to say that, but uh, some people say Dutrain's disease, I suppose. Uh, they want to use monoclonal antibodies. If you, if you haven't heard of monoclonal antibodies, you have, but you just haven't heard them called that. You can't watch TV without seeing commercials for monoclonal antibodies. They go by the names uh, Stellara and Umira, and these are the new drugs that came out maybe 20 years ago or so, and you see, uh, you see commercials for them literally every hour on every station because they are incredibly profit-intensive. They sell for thousands upon thousands of dollars a year if you're on the, these kinds of drugs, the UMAB drugs. They all end with the word UMAB or the suffix UMAB. These UMAB drugs are drugs that uh, treat the immune system as if it itself were the enemy and they destroy the immune system. They used to use drugs that suppress the immune system, things like prednisone. Now they selectively destroy the immune system with little missiles. Monoclonal antibodies are little missiles against the immune system. They, they kill off parts of the immune system, cells of the immune system. Why would you ever do that, you say? Well, it turns out that things like Dupuytren's contracture and, uh, and um, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis and autoimmune diseases in general are diseases where the immune system goes crazy. So the pharmacological medical strategy, the doctor's strategy is let's just kill the immune system, not even suppress it like prednisone. Let's just kill it. Selectively, of course, you don't kill the entire immune system. You selectively kill the immune system. You selectively kill the uh, immune cells that are attacking the joints or that are attacking the, uh, uh, attacking the nerves or that are attacking the digestive tract lining. Wherever the immune system is attract, uh, attacking, you selectively kill the immune cells that are, that are the bad guys in this particular case. The problem is you need your immune system, and this predisposes you when, you when you kill off parts of the immune system, even if you're selective about it, it predisposes you to other health challenges, particularly other immune health challenges like cancer. Ironically, these are drugs that are used to treat cancer. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. Let's go to Texas and say good morning to Chris. What's up, Chris? How you doing, buddy? Hi, Ben. Um, I just would like it if you could give me your best sales pitch 
on the nightly essence probiotic and what is so different and unique about it compared to the probiotics that are available like in retail stores. And one of the problems I have been is that, I mean, I'll, I'll just come out of the closet and say, I have autism. Okay. I'm autistic. And, uh, I have not established yet the behavior pattern of, you know, buying stuff through mail order. I mean, I'm still in the brick and mortar mode. I, I go buy stuff at the retail stores and, uh, it, you know, I'm, I'm taking steps, but it's, it's a very slow process. And I thank you for putting up with me. I'm sorry you have to put up with people like no, me because I, I'm really not putting autism, up that. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Really, autism is just a nice way of describing someone who's physically and mentally retarded. That's no, basically what for me, Chris, that's not true at all. First of all, you don't sound retarded, and you uh, and you don't sound autistic for that matter. Autistic comes from the word auto. It's people who don't respond to their their environment. You know, when we when we're responding to our environment, when we're doing this dance we do with uh, other people and other experiences and other situations, we're at, we're doing a dance with the environment. It's it's a skill, really, to, to learn to interact with the environment. Autistic comes from the word auto, and it means that instead of responding to your environment, you're you're responding to you you've turned your attention inwards. Auto meaning self or same. You've turned the attention inwards instead of outwards. And people who have autistic autism don't respond to their environment in, in a normal or even healthy way. And that's why, and that's really what autism is about. And you don't sound like you have that problem. So I'm not even sure how, how you, and never say, by the way, let me just say one, one more thing and I'll let you finish. Don't say I am or I have, you know, don't identify that way. That's not in your interest to identify that way. You say, I act in an autistic manner or fashion. Then you're like, there's a you that's separate. So you never want to identify with your disease. That's always a problem. But I'm not even sure, based on talking to you, you certainly don't sound retarded. And you don't sound like you have autism. What do you mean when you say you have autism? How does it show up? Oh, I, that, that, that would... Uh... Would that be a big long. show? Would that take a long time? Okay, so that, 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 that would that would open up too many cans of worms. For me to, okay, I got you. I got you. And, and, and you sound pretty. Topic, but I would like. I, you sound I, pretty I self-aware. Like you, you sound pretty self-aware. I'll, I'll put it this way. I'll put it that way. Uh, can you hang on a minute? Because I want to. Autism is a very sure. fascinating subject and a very misunderstood subject, in my opinion. So hang on, and we'll uh, let you finish up when we come back from our break, and then we'll talk a little autism uh, with Chris from. Chris from Texas. Hang on, Chris. Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll, we'll return right after this. We are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We're talking a little bit about autism. Interesting subject here with Chris from Texas. You there, Chris? Yes. Chris? And, and autism is really nothing more than a messed up gut. It starts with a triangle of disease, your digestive tract. That's where autism begins. Good for you. That's awesome. I was gonna. I was gonna tell you that. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I've yet to. Reason, see, you know, I've yet to see an autistic but, but, kid. Or excuse me. Just let me say this real quick. I've yet to see an autistic kid that did not have some kind of digestive health issue. And that's great that you, you don't sound like a kid. But have you had? Were you diagnosed as an autist with autism when you were a kid? No, not until about ten years ago. I'm 48 years old now. Okay. All right. Well, I'd be curious to know, like, why do you say you're autism? You don't, don't sound retarded. So let's get that out. Let's get that off the table. How, how is it that you, your autism shows up or what makes you say you're autistic? Uh, extreme introspection and mm -hmm. also, uh, extreme aversions. The people who are autistic have, uh, weird aversions to things. Okay. But just like, okay. just, just like I have an aversion to, uh, buying stuff by mail order. I, I, I mean, like, for instance, if your products were available um, over the counter at the retail store, I go get them. And the only reason why I don't buy your products is because uh, I have got to do the mail. And, and, and that's an aversion to me. I haven't overcome that yet. Okay, I got you. I got you. Did you have that when you were a kid, too, or did it just show up? Yeah. yeah. I mean, not mail order, but uh, other aversions when you were a kid? Absolutely. 
absolutely, all my life. It, it, uh, autism is about extreme introspection and extreme aversions to different things. Okay, that's interesting. I knew about the introspection part, but I, I guess it makes sense that you would, you'd be afraid of stuff that was external to you. It has to do with the, this idea of self, auto meaning self. Uh, it's like a f- inward focus, an extreme inward focus on the self to, where the point, to the point where you can't handle the environment. And I guess you must have a mild form of it if, with, with these aversions. If you've ever seen kids who have really severe, severe autism, they can't handle any input from the outside. I mean, any input from the outside will will set them off. Uh, one, so that, one, one thing, one thing, I, one thing I heard you talk about in a previous show. You were talking about Inulin, and uh-huh. I was buying. I won't. I won't mention the name of the store. I was. You can mention the name of the store. It's not, yeah, it's not a problem. I was, which, which, a, I was buying a probiotic uh, at the retail store, and I looked at the ingredients, and sure enough, it had Inulin. I'm like, wait a minute, Inulin? That's that's counterintuitive. Why would you put how, Inulin it, in a probiotic? Because Inulin feeds bacteria. It's a prebiotic. Fiber feeds pre fiber feeds probiotics. That's where the term prebiotic comes from, and inulin is a great way to feed your probiotics. Now, typically, typically for most for most people, I don't know, I say most people, inulin's not a problem, but it can be a problem. Uh, it's a, it's a fructan technically. I don't know if you heard of the FODMAPS diet. Have you heard of that? FODMAPS, yeah, F-O-D-M-A. I've been reading about that. Okay, so you know that uh, FODMAPS, the F for FODMAPS is fructan, and uh, uh, inulin is a fructan. So yes, inulin can be a problem for folks who have or who have FODMAPS issues, and, and many many autistic patients do have that. You have gut problems. I take it. I assume that you do, right? You have digestive horrible, horrible gut problems. Horrible. Yeah, I, I figured. All my life. Horrible. Okay, so that's really your key right there. And it sounds like you're on the right track, but uh, why have you considered fasting? I can't. Why and, can't you? And I'm, and, I'm, and, and I'm thin and, you know, it's the one thing that, that you advise people to do. One of the things that, that uh, I, I mean, I do some of the things that you advise, but I uh-huh. can't do all of it. But, like what? But like the fasting? The fasting like, like, is like what eliminating, you... eliminating sugar from my diet. I, I try to keep sugar to a bare minimum. What do you mean by sugar? You're talking about dessert sugar, or you're talking about flour and cereal and fructose. bread and that kind of fructose? Fructose. I see. Yes. Do you notice I, that fructose I, I, is I a mean, pr- I, I, do you I notice- mean, fructose is poison. Fructose. Do you, is do you notice poison. it when you do? Do you notice it when you do fructose that you have a problem? Uh, across the board, yes. It's like it's just like poison. Uh, interesting. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty harsh stuff. I. I wouldn't say it's poison, but yes, if the dose makes the poison, you can reach a dose where it has poisonous like effects. All sugar, all straight sugar. Nature did not intend human beings to eat straight sugar like that. Uh, and and the way we breed our or the way we pro, um, genetically modify our fruits, it's almost like straight sugar because of the high sugar content. And fruit juice is a total disaster because you don't get the you, know, you don't get the fiber that slows down the release of the sugar. Fruit juice is is a big problem. If you're gonna do fruit juice, sip on it. You must fruit juice must really set you off. Well, I would I would tell all your listeners uh, drink alcohol before you ingest fructose. Uh, I mean, I, I believe that alcohol is less harmful than fructose. Well, that's that's, that's that might opinion. be pushing it, but I, I definitely see where you're going. You know, you know my take yeah. on fructose. So, what was your question? I didn't mean to take you off on a digression uh, you like mean, that. Just, just uh, tell. Uh, um, Talk more about probiotics and what's so unique about uh, nightly, nightly essence. essence. By the way, I'm, I'm I'm glad that your show is more than just a sales pitch because uh, there's plenty of infomercials out there. I hate that. This, this program is wonderful because it's a lot Thank more than an infomercial. I hate those sales pitch commercial uh, radio shows. I turn I tune them off, <laughs> and I like radio. I hate that. I hate those. I hate those. And I know there are tons of them because, you know, people want to make money and, and I understand that everything's business, but then it, it kind of diminishes your message. You know, it, it makes people question your motives and, and why you're saying things. And, and if you're, what you're saying is totally accurate and I don't want that to ever happen with this program. And that's why when you said, give your best sales pitch, I intuitively flinched, you know, <laughs> cause I hate that. I never, ever want to be that guy who's selling you the, the product. I, I mean, I'll talk about products for sure. Sure, the longevity products, my true skin health product, but only if I 100% believe it's going to benefit you. That's the, my, my mission here on this program. When I talk about the truth, when I formulated the truth, I formulated it because I thought there was a need for, for skincare products that didn't have baloney in it or that weren't fully, fully, that weren't 90% water and, and fillers and waxes, et cetera. And when I talk about the longevity products, I talk about it because I know how well they're formulated and I talk about their ease of, uh, ease of use and ease of, uh, uh, ease of obtaining. Just 
you order your products once a month and you get them. As far as the nightly essence goes, it's one of the one of the best formulated probiotics I've ever seen. The guy who formulated it is a friend of mine, and that's full disclosure. Nonetheless, it's so Jordan well formulated. Ruben. No, Jordan didn't do that one. Uh, a guy named Troy Opperly did that one. And, uh, okay. uh, and in any case, uh, it's got a full, round, a full full spectrum of probiotics. It's got like 14 or 15 probiotics. It's got a big dose of them. And it also has natokinase, which is a really neat digestive enzyme, really neat enzyme. It's not specifically a digestive enzyme, but it will help that way. Troy wanted to have enzymes and, and his probiotics together. He actually made them for himself. And I've seen so many benefits from these things. I, I would be remiss in my obligation as a healthcare professional to not tell you about the importance of the nightly essence. And that's why, to me, it's, it's just a must-have. It's not part of the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, and if you're going to do one or the other, do the Mighty 90 first, although you shouldn't make that decision. But after the Mighty 90, get on the Nightly Essence. It's the next, next important one to get, especially if you're dealing with uh, any kind of digestive health issues, but even if you're not, but especially if you're dealing with digestive health issues or mental health issues that are associated with digestive health issues like autism, and make no mistake about it, autism begins in the gut. You're right on, Chris. And, and you know that as, as somebody who has it. You, you're symptoms get worse when you eat certain foods, no? Listen, Is that correct? Uh, I'm, I'm going I'm to drop off and let you get to the next call. All right, thank, good. Thank well, we're out of time. time. I appreciate it, Chris. Yeah, autism, thank all, thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Uh, autism moms out there, Please understand, autism should first and foremost need uh, be considered as a gut issue. Now, I don't know 100% that it's only a gut issue, but uh, in my experience, I've yet to see a case of autism, and I've seen hundreds of them, that didn't have some kind of uh, gut problem uh, that was associated with it. So uh, get a book called, if you're dealing, if you're a parent who has autism, or if you're an adult who has autism for that, or you're a parent who has a kid with autism, or you're an adult uh, who has autism, get a book called uh, The Gut and Psychology Syndrome by Natasha Kinsky Campbell, uh, The GAPS Diet, Gut and Psychology Syndrome Diet. Uh, and it's a, just a wonderful book that really goes into a lot of detail about how uh, the, the, the specifics between how the uh, gut is connected to the brain. You don't, if you listen to this program, you don't need to know. Any, you're not going to learn anything new, but it's still really good information. The, it's called the gut-brain axis, and we've only known about it for about 40 years t scientifically. Although we've known about it, uh, uh, we've known about it anecdotally for a lot longer than that. Uh, there's an extremely important relationship between the gut and the brain. Not only between the gut and the brain in your head, but the gut itself is a brain. Uh, get a book called The Second Brain by Michael Gershom if you want to read more about that. Serotonin, the brain, the neurotransmitter serotonin is mostly a digestive molecule. All right, that's it for us today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, and truth skin health, or truthtreatments.com for all the truth skin health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.